Hi, I'm Ya Qin. Today, I will present you our work on the feasibility of predicting users' privacy concerns using contextual labels and personal preferences. The project is collaborated with Tony and Hao Jian. A few years ago, when our team member was working on a project called Lean Privacy Review, the team interviewed hundreds of participants. Researchers presented participants' data practices and asked them if they feel comfortable when the company collects and uses their data in certain ways. Once interviewed enough people, researchers could form stereotypes for participants. Indeed, when the participant talked for a few minutes, the interviewer would generally guess what type of privacy concerns the participant may have regarding different practices. These guesses were usually surprisingly accurate. For example, some participants were strongly against the price discrimination. We can explain this phenomenon with cognitive biases. Numerous studies on consumer decision behaviors have also shown that the decision-making process is influenced by various cognitive biases and heuristics, such as availability bias, the framing effect, and confirmation bias. We hypothesize that although cognitive biases and heuristics influence users' opinions on privacy, these effects may also exhibit a somewhat consistent pattern unique to each individual. We refer to that as privacy preferences. In this work, we explored how to model privacy preferences and use them to predict privacy concerns. To model preferences, the typical methods include capturing users' privacy profiles and then predict their concerns using the profiles. Alan Westing developed Privacy Segmentation Index, consisting of a few general questions and rules to group people into three categories. However, many have found that Westing's categories have low correlations with users' privacy concerns towards specific contacts, and the index hasn't been updated for a while. In some domains like mobile setting, private work have tried to cluster similar users. In IoT settings, researchers have identified common factors to control scenarios in factorial VNet experiments. However, these methods require significant data and it's hard to generalize to diverse domains as the tested scenarios stem from domain-specific factors. Towards the problems, we introduce context label, a method for predicting users' privacy concerns by modeling the underlying reasoning process. The idea originated from three premises. Users' privacy concerns for a specific context show a certain level of logical reasoning. So it can be approximated as a function of the contacts and individual privacy preferences. By incorporating non-mutually exclusive labels, we can capture nuances of contacts. And instead of running factorial VNet experiments, we can capture users' privacy profiles by analyzing their open-ended feedback on selected practices. In this work, we explored participants' privacy attitudes consistency to prove that their attitudes are not random. We also investigate the correlation between their concerns and the context labels and test if we can use the labels and preferences to predict privacy concerns. We designed a two-stage survey on MTurk. Here's a survey example. First, we use open-ended questions to collect participants' privacy concerns. Participants were asked how uncomfortable they feel about selected scenarios using ratings and their explanations using free text. We also collected their responses for Westing's index. Then we asked another group of crowd workers to label the explanation using concern label we predefined. To collect privacy concerns across domains, we selected data actions from diverse practices, covering areas such as Internet of Things and social networks. These practices covered four different actions, including data collection, sharing, processing, and usage. Here we illustrate one practice, including four different actions. We synthesized 18 labels related to privacy contacts. Those labels include categorical factors from contextual integrity framework, like the collected data type. And there are also non-exclusive labels, like price discrimination. 
As an example here, we used those labels to annotate selected scenarios. In the survey, each participant was required to finish one survey a day for five days. The method reduced participants' fatigue and, more importantly, allowed us to test our first research question if participants remain consistent to their own privacy attitudes. We inserted several same data actions and Westin's index in three surveys and tested the answer interconsistency from each participant. In the consistency test, for both our selected scenario and Westin's index, our results indicate a strong alignment within users' own answers across three tests. There are also outliers, but they are usually boundary cases where participants have neutral attitudes towards a specific data practices. However, these participants' own data reasoning is often consistent across three surveys. We list an example here. This participant's comfort level toward an action were not the same in three tasks. But in all three surveys, the participant gave similar explanation like the one listed here, suggesting a neutral attitude. The consistency test validated that, in general, people's privacy attitudes result from their own logical reasoning. For the correlation between labels and users' privacy concerns, we found that compared to exclusive categorical factors and the Westin segmentation index, our non-exclusive labels demonstrated stronger correlations with participants' concerns. For example, in this figure, Labels with higher bars have stronger correlation with negative privacy attitudes. Most top-ranking labels like unexpected use, financial loss, and high-risk probability are non-exclusive labels. In contrast, Westin's index and most categorical factors like data standard type are less correlated to privacy concerns. Finally, to predict concerns, we built two types of multi-layer perception models. The first model used contextual labels to predict whether participants have privacy concerns about specific contacts. The, label, the model is trained on all participants' data to test the predictive effect of contextual label. We trained the second type of model on each participant's data so it integrates personal preferences with context label and can be used to predict specific participants' attitude. We replace contextual label here with responses for Westin's index and categorical factors as our two baselines. Overall, context label has more promising predictive effects on participants' privacy attitudes towards unseen data practice. When combined with individual privacy preferences, the performance can be improved. Among all model tested, the combination of personal preferences and our proposed contextual label can achieve the best performance with 73% accuracy. We use similar methods to predict whether users have specific privacy concern categories towards specific contexts. When predicting specific concern categories, Context labels still outperform other models, especially in frequently mentioned categories such as invasive monitoring. However, there are still some low record scores for certain categories such as lack of informed consent. The low record score is attributed to sparse data, mainly because our participants rarely exp uh, expressed those concern categories in the survey. In summary, our results illustrate that individuals exhibit relevant, stable reasoning for their expressed privacy attitudes. This provides opportunities to model the decision-making process by identifying the factors that raise their awareness when they encounter privacy issues. Instead of running factorial VNS experiments, we can capture users' privacy profiles by analyzing their open-ended feedback on selected data practice. By incorporating more non-exclusive uh, labels, we can capture more nuances of a data practice. And those labels can be used to predict privacy concerns across domains. When combined with personal preferences, the contextual labels show promising predictive effects on individual privacy attitudes, 
achieving an accuracy of 73%. Thank you for listening.